Happy New Year to everyone. Welcome to Back to Songs Alive for 2024. Um, I'm Jilly Moon. I know most of you. Uh, it's great. Got some new faces as well for me. Love that. So I just wanted to open it up actually as a roundtable discussion. Who would like to share, even from personal experience, how things are changing for you as a songwriter coming into 2024? And that, that could be the last several years, but really... And also, where do you think it's going? I'm not sure. I could jump in. Great. Hi, Brian. Hey, uh, this is my first uh, Songs Alive event, guys. Great to great to meet you all uh, uh, in person-ish and, uh, and to be hanging out with you. Thanks for having me here. Um, uh, I'd, uh, I haven't read this thread that you linked us to just now. Um, so maybe somebody's already been talking about AI a little bit, but obviously that's something that's uh on the minds of, of uh songwriters lately and you know if anybody's tinkered with chat gpt you can you can see um how advanced that stuff is and how quickly it's coming along and i've been talking to some of my songwriter friends about how um it's scary to think that maybe one day instead of somebody going to spotify and picking music that somebody else wrote they go to their ai and they say hey write me a song about me today and you know make me a new playlist of songs just about me and what I want to hear and they get this custom playlist that a computer made for them and and then they're listening to that and they don't need our music anymore so that's kind of a scary thought uh I forgot to say something about me um so I uh I am from Oklahoma City that's where I am based um but I'm out in Nashville a lot because that's the scene I'm trying to break into the most uh, and uh, I've been songwriting commercial songwriting in earnest for about four years um, just a couple of uh, little victories along the way, but nothing huge yet. Still, still hoping for that big break moment anytime now. It's great to have you, Brian. A really good uh, prompt on the uh, on the AI piece. Um, the thing I didn't address that I think is very significant today in general is the accessibility, the communications, and all that we have to find out where to pitch, where to go, what to do and all, you know, I go back having <laughs> lived the history of rock and roll, as I say, sometimes I, uh, we didn't have that years back. We didn't have the ability. I didn't know where to go, didn't know what to do and didn't really know where to start. And nowadays it's easy to get on and find, uh, connections, find, uh, we have all the networking capabilities with with the social media and 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 groups like this uh, we didn't have this years ago uh we didn't even have nsai you know way back there we had none of these type of groups so there was no connectivity and no place to start if you were particularly off in timbuktu like uh many are uh you, you know you didn't have that connectivity. So I think that's the greatest thing about 2024 is that there is no excuse for not being able to know, you know, where, who's out there, where to go, you know, and then, you know, the big step is just coming up with what's needed and making those connections, you know, but they're there. Yeah, really great uh, summer. Rodney, you want to uh, either extend on that or what Brian had said? Well, quick, my, my quick note on AI, you know, yeah. I mean, it's everywhere and the discussion is uh, very hot all the time uh, in, in many ways on, on many topics, but I'm, I, I, I've, listening to it over the past year and it's amazing how much, you know, a year ago, what's AI. And then now, you know, I mean, Good grief that that's the scary part but um i'm I, i'm reminded of, of a story that in a recording class the teacher told us about you know back in the day you know if you needed a straight drum beat you sat a guy down behind a drum okay we need a steady kick boom 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 for an hour you know <laughs> whatever and so on and then the, then the hi-hat or whatever and you know he was joking about drummers going god i wish i didn't have to do this i wish somebody had invented a machine to do this part somebody invented a machine to do that and guess what <laughs> there went all the drummers um so <laughs> there seems to be this pattern i see of god i wish somebody would invent a machine to do the drudge part i hate the drudge part someone invents a machine to do the drudge part whoa machines are taking our jobs <laughs> over and over and over again you know so 
you know it's an interesting uh it's it's an interesting concept and, and that we and you know people talk about this in in general like companies too corporations but but is AI really taking over the job and and I I want to go there for a minute Rodney because you just said oh we could start doing using tools right like drum machines to make things easier right to for, to remove the drudgery you said and I wonder if AI can be a positive like how how songwriters could actually use it for a positive for productivity for m making songs better what do people think about that maybe we can hear from someone who hasn't spoken yet yeah I recall a gentleman named Roger Lynn I don't know if anybody remember that name the Lindrum was like 40 years ago. That's ancient <laughs> compared to now. I mean, mm -hmm. he was a drummer and he actually developed one of our early drum machines. A lot of people made, are you, like I say, are you committing treason there, brother, putty? Right. Because you're a drummer, you invented like, a drum ooh, machine. It's a drum machine you know. and you're a drummer. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I remember just like what happened was a lot of people got those move bass things to uh, do the bass tracks on a lot of things. Yeah, so I, I say, totally get bass, it. Because I sort of set up my fretless bass to sound like Jamerson on the move vibe. So you still have to know how to, um, you still have to understand, um, because like I said, at the time when I started playing music, I was very young. We actually had actual instruments. So you know how those actual instruments, violins, violas, cellos, we know how those things actually sounded up close. So. Yep, no, I, I totally get your point. I'm Dan. Um, I'm uh, originally from Ohio. Uh, my name's Dan Cooper. I'm originally from Ohio, um, but I moved to Las Vegas in 83, and I've been here since. I wanted to comment on AI. I, I just remember seeing uh, an article uh, that talked about, and I forget who it, who it was, which one of the, Rogers or Hammerstein wrote the lyrics. Um, he was terrified to tell his mother that he was using a thesaurus to come up with words. Uh, from some of my exposure to it that I've looked at, um, Maybe other people's experience are different, but to me, the I this the phrase pre um, preconceived. It's like the the only thing that they can come up with, kind of, is stuff that is you know data that's brought in, and I, I feel like we have an edge that, uh, you know, the old uh, songwriting trick where you put two things together that aren't related in a certain way. You know, maybe the machine, maybe the computer uh, processing can do that, but I don't think that can ever do it in the way that we could add layers to that. Uh, so I'm not really concerned about it. I I did write, uh, have it write a couple of things that I thought about uh, that I was working on. I didn't use it, but I thought, well, I could get ideas from this that and and not actually use what they have provided. Uh, and and then there wouldn't, you know, that's just like the world, uh, something yeah. that comes out of the sky. So I like the idea. And, you know, if you've, if you've used chat GPT right now or, or Bard, which is the Google version, um, you can generate a lot of things, right? But it is to spark an idea because we don't want to lose our originality. Like, I, I don't think that you can really lose your originality. In fact, Warhol said there's nothing original anymore. We're just like reinventing the same thing over and over again. That's why he did the Campbell soup cans on his canvases in New York back in the, in the 60s. So like that, that's a philosophy that we have to consider, like what is original? I am Michael Pollack. Um, I'm originally from Chicago. I'm now living sort of by St. Louis. That's the nearest major city. I'm actually kind of in the middle of nowhere, but St. Louis is the nearest major city that people on here would actually recognize. As far as AI, I think the important thing that we always got to remember is that it's artificial intelligence. It's not human intelligence and kind of going off what was just said. Uh, one thing that we have yet really to program into computers is that creative aspect of it. And, you know, we were talking about the drum machines and with the drum machines, like whenever you use a drum machine, it's usually pretty obvious you're using a drum machine. Um, you know, they're getting better and you could kind of, you know, most of them have that little fudge button where you could kind of put the quote unquote human element into it. But, you know, it's still very robotic sounding. And like with AI, it's, you know, we're still, it's us programming it and it's us who's really got the, the 
driving hand in it. So, I mean, I'm not worried about artificial intelligence taking over. I mean, I've tried the artificial intelligence and it's, like I said, the the creative aspect just isn't there yet. And I don't know if that can be programmed into it. And plus, you know, there's this big assumption too that somehow if artificial intelligence were to actually take off on its own, that it would mimic human intelligence. And why are we assuming that? I mean, why would a computer want to be a human? Mm, mm. Well, they're like millions of humans. <laughs> uh, really great uh, points there. I really feel like what you're saying is you're not really worried about it um, in that it wouldn't overtake what we do as a human, which is a lot of originality and authenticity. Um, yeah. Really great. Okay, Nico, what do you think? My name is Nico. I'm based in Germany, in Europe. I've uh, been doing this writing songs for a while, but in the last uh, couple of years, I've uh, started, you know, uh, doing my own songs and singing them myself and putting them out there and on Spotify and stuff like that. On the positive side of AI, I and mean, I've not been using it much, but you usually get to the point where you, you can publish something and it's, oh, we think always about the music. And, oh, God, I need artwork, you know, and not you know, design, uh, graphic design. The last time I used, it wasn't ChatGPT. I think, I don't know if it was a Microsoft one or the Google one, I can't remember. But I tried that and that works. You know, it just gave me some key, some key uh, words uh, about the songs, you know, the title, the things, what it was about. And they throw some, it threw something at me, I didn't like it, I tried it again. So there's still some interaction. Yeah. So you're doing yourself in the end. But in the end, I did get something. So it kind of, uh, that helped you with what your lyrics or what did you use? No, to, to uh, artwork for the for the actual song. Oh, artwork. artwork. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nice. So that's uh, that's one way of using it. You know, it's not taking anything because I would have copied something. I would have tweaked something anyway. It's not like mm -hmm. I would have started from. I mean, if you can do it very very, very well, but most of us can't do everything. They just uh, can do some things. Yeah. So in that case, it, it was a positive experience. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's so infused in everything that we do if you're on the internet a lot. Uh, you know, I use Canva as an example for my artwork and it's got the button generate with AI if you want or, you know, if you go mm -hmm. Grammarly even to, to help spell checkers using, you know, certain pieces of AI, you can go to Google Docs now and it can help you write a paragraph. And I guess it's the assistance is what, what it's doing, but the... The question that we have in the copyright arena is are we uh, is our ip our intellectual property uh property threatened by ai um which is something that is a serious issue in the music industry uh on especially on content aggregation content distribution and where people make money from it so who's profiting right from this any thoughts on the business side of it if anyone's had any any uh understanding uh of that yeah i can uh, add just a little bit um in that um that's where i think about like you know a lot of people have made great points here about ai is never going to be able to write a human masterpiece like we like you know really great songs uh, and that, and I think that's true. I think AI is not coming for our jobs in that capacity. But you know, when you turn on the TV and you look at the the song that was uh, um, put behind a Nike commercial or a Gatorade commercial or something, uh, that's not exactly a masterpiece. That's something that AI could generate. And if a corporation uh, wants to pay less for their song and they can, you know, they can buy a subscription to an AI music generation tool. And then they own the copyrights and they don't have to license anything through any sort of synchronization licensing, then, you know, of course they're going to do it. Um, so I think it's that low hanging fruit that we are at more risk of losing jobs on personally. Yeah, great. great. I think of the side of this that bothers me the most is the, is it taking away our creativity? Uh, I remember back when several people came up with random melody generators a few years back. And, I, and I'm thinking, you know, why? You know, I mean, that's the whole fun of it. That's the whole joy of the creativity is me coming up with something 
and feeling good about that. I'm not going to feel good about getting something from a random melody generator, you know, that's, that I'm going to put into a song. Uh, I'm not getting to do it, you know, so why, you know, I, and, I, and I'm seeing AI a little bit that way. But, you know, you can go to extremes with any of this using tools. I know a pro writer in Nashville who said one time that he would not even use a rhyming dictionary. You know, he says, if I can't come up with it, then it's probably too uh, too complicated or whatever. And there's some merit in that. But but yet, you know, the, the tools are there for a good purpose in many cases. And, and we've foolish really not in my mind not take it, take advantage of those oh wow you just summed that up really well donnie i mean there's the alarming piece of it is why do you have to use it which is what you kind of started with like oh. we should be able to be original but then you kind of capped it with well if it is a tool and, and you know like yeah. other tools why should we ignore it so that's really great that you said that we'll do one last comment from rodney rodney uh, yeah, uh, well, I hate to end on a scary note, but uh, kind of dovetailing what Brian was talking about, that's been kind of my worry with this. Um, you know, I don't think anyone's going to ask AI anytime in the in the near future to write a symphony. But what I worry about is that the people with the purse strings uh, on their side are going to be using AI mostly for stuff that it's like, we don't want it good. We want it Tuesday. Um, you know, it, it it's gonna hurt jingle writers. It's gonna hurt jingle writers a lot, I think. Um how will do you how do you think it'll hurt them? Because they're not going to be hired. It's going to be, hey, we need something for this commercial. Okay, bonk, there's something for this commercial. It's good enough. You know, do you think but do you think the jingle writer would have to use AI to get it turn it around by Tuesday? I mean, is it the jingle writer doing that? Well, yeah, if if they ask them to. I'm just worried that the executive is going to, you know, say, cut out the middleman. I'll do it on my own computer. Oh, yeah. So you think that, the, and it's a fair point, that the writer is going to be cut, the, the artist in this is going to be cut out of the complete process of any music need. It, well, not not any, but just cheap this, and easy stuff, right. you know, as, 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 as Brian said, the low-hanging fruit. And I'd say that's like a dovetail to like what was happened to the drummers and the drum machines and what's happened to the writers I can go write something on an AI or what's happened to like uh, going get hiring a designer I'll go on Canva um, right the, well the the flip side of it is of course you know for for the joke I made earlier there are lots of drummers out there still it's still <laughs> a multi-million dollar industry even with the Lun the Lindrum and the 808 and all that stuff available mm -hmm. there are still plenty of drummers out there so you know use that as an example one hopes <laughs> uh yeah really really great points gosh we've had a great discussion Risa you seem to have want to really you were oh, bursting to I was say just, something. oh I was just gonna say I was the low hanging fruit <laughs> I was a copywriter at an advertising agency and I did write some jingles, but that was just part of my job. But it, who it will really hurt are the commercial music houses and all of the musicians and everyone that works there, especially. But jingle writers aren't hired just to write jingles. They're just on staff. It's not it's not that kind of a thing like like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, oh, the amazing points. You don't here, get what, residuals, no. <laughs> what I'm hearing is um, it's scary. I'm hearing that AI could be a great tool if we can use it well to, to uh, infuse our creativity even more, make us even better writers. But it could be daunting if... For the cheap and nasty uh, songs, we could be cut out. There could be services. I'm sure there are already. You could go to a site and go, write me a, a 30 seconds uh, background music for a scary scene, and they it might be already there. One of and if if it's not already there, that's a great idea for a startup for anyone in this room or anyone who's listening. <laughs> Maybe we just need to change the way our definition of what writer is. You know, right? like. Uh, embracing new technology 
and I'm just putting these out there, right? Of all the things, like we can either like lament about it or we can embrace it and go, how can I use that to my advantage? And how can I become a better writer and better business person? Because we all know that as songwriters, we also have to be business folks, right? We need to be able to, to produce our songs, pitch our songs, help monetize our songs, get the right people to involve. So I don't know. Interesting. All right, I'm going to cap it. I actually felt <laughs> that this was a really good topic. Thank you for the great discussion.